Right, so we're going to solve uh, quadratic equations using the quadratic formula, and so this is something you should have seen before. So I'm just going to present you with the formula and just talk about some things that need to be true right, as we uh, go through the problem. So the, the formula that we use, uh, the quadratic formula, comes from a formula that looks like this. This is what we call standard form of a quadratic equation where it's got an a in front of the x squared, it's got a b in front of the x to the first, and we have a c value that we call the constant. Okay, And the constant term okay, um, does not have any x values attached to it at all. And if you notice on the other side, we are assuming that when you use the quadratic formula that it is set equal to 0. Because when we, we created this formula, we did so with it set equal to 0. So the same thing needs to be true for any of the ones you're solving. So what you're going to do is you're going to use this formula. You're going to pull these values out of the equation, the a, b, and c, once it's in standard form, set equal to 0. And then you're just going to simplify. And we're going to leave our answers in simplest radical form. Okay, so let's go through and do a few problems. So our first problem here says 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, and so the first thing I'm thinking about is, is it in standard form? And it is. Okay, and so I'm going to start by identifying my a, b, and c values. So a, b, c. Okay, be careful, your c is actually negative 5, not positive 5. So I'm just going to plug it in the formula. So the formula says uh, negative b, so the opposite of whatever b is, plus or minus, the square root of b squared, which is positive 3 in this case, okay, minus 4 times 2 times negative 5, and it's got to be negative because uh, my c value has a minus sign. Okay, So that was 4ac. And this is all over 2 times 2. So what we're going to do with our problems is we are not going to actually take the square root unless it's a perfect square. We're going to use uh, simplifying radicals and leave our answer in radical form. So I'm going to simplify just underneath this radical, and we're also going to simplify the 2a because that's simple enough. So this is really all over 4. All right, and I'm going to say negative 3 plus or minus. Well, this is, I'm just going to kind of come above this and say this is really 9, right? That's 3 squared. And then this says negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 5 is positive 40. So I'm going to say this is really plus 40. So under my radical, I have 9 plus 40, which is 49. Okay. Here's the nice thing. We know the square root of 49. It's just 7. So if I'm asking you to simplify this as much as you can, which is what we always assume when they ask us to solve, uh, we're going to say in this case now that x is equal to negative 3 plus 7 over 4, or negative 3 minus 7 over 4, because this symbol plus or minus means use both of them and get two answers. So when I simplify this, that says negative, uh, three, negative 3 plus 7, which is 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And negative 3 minus 7 is 10, negative 10. And negative 10, which I'm just going to write this off to the side, negative 10 over 4 simplifies to negative 5 over 2. So I get my two answers, x equals 1, x is equal to negative 5 over 2. So let's do that one more time with this next problem here. So same concept to start. We're going to say, set up the quadratic formula. Negative 13 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 13 squared, minus 4 times 6 times negative 17. This is all over 2a, which if you can do this in your head, 2a is 2 times 6. I'm just going to write the 12. Right, save myself a little bit of extra writing, because I can do 2 times 6 in my head. I don't necessarily need to write that. So again, let's simplify under the radical. This says okay, uh, 13 squared, which I'm just going to pull out my calculator to simplify this. I'm going to type in 13 squared, which is 169. Okay, And then if I multiply together, so this is... 169, okay? And if I multiply together negative 4 times 6 times 17, okay, I get 408. And because these two are negative, I'm actually going to get plus 408. All right, so let's see what that comes uh, out to be. So if I have the 408 plus the 169, I get, well, let me do that correctly, 169 plus 408, okay, I get 577. So here's the thing about 577. It does not have any perfect squares in it. Okay, so I'm going to say in this case negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 577 all over 12. Okay, I can't simplify the square root of 577 anymore. So let me just double check and make sure I'm correct. Um, when I divide by, so I'm checking 
for example, that 49 is not a perfect is not a factor. I'm checking that 64 is not a factor. I'm going to check one more that 81 is not a factor. So I'm not finding any perfect squares. Okay, when I do this. Okay, so I'm actually right now typing on my calculator. Okay, uh, d dividing 577 by each of the perfect squares, and I'm not finding any. Okay, so it looks like, as much as I'm trying, I got one more to look at. That is 16. Okay, I checked every single perfect square from uh, 4 all the way up to 144, and I could not find a perfect square. So this is not going to simplify anymore. And so guess what we're going to do? We're going to say this is my answer. We are not going to type the square root of 577 in the calculator and get a decimal and get these messy looking rounded answers. If it doesn't simplify, we're going to leave it just like that. Okay. So let's do one more of these, or maybe two more. We're going to do two more of these. Okay. So we're going to say in our next example, same idea, but not set equal to zero. So before I get started, I'm going to rewrite this, which I'm going to do it right next to it. Okay. I'm going to say this is x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals zero. All right. And now I'm going to um, go through the same process again. So we're going to say this is 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 8. Right, all over, my a in this case is 1, so I'm going to say 2 times 1, which is 2. So when I simplify under this radical, this is 4, so again, I'm just going to do this off to the side, 4. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 8 looks like uh, positive 32. So underneath my radical, it looks like I'm going to get a 36. There's another nice perfect square. Cool, we can simplify this. So I'm going to say this is 2 plus 6 over 2 or 2 minus 6 over 2. So I'm going to get two answers. This is 8 over 2, which is 4. This is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. Right? So that's another possibility. There's my two answers using the Pythagorean theorem, I'm sorry, using the quadratic formula. And if you notice, this was actually factorable, and you could have factored, and you would have gotten those same two answers. Okay? So here's our last one. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to start off by saying negative um, negative b, which in this case would be 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times 10, all over 2 times 3. So let's simplify underneath our radical. This says 4, that's negative 2 squared, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, negative 12 times 10 is negative 120. So here's where how my problem is going to look. 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 120 is negative 116 all over 6. We ran into a problem. I'm asking you to take the square root of negative 116, and if you take the square root of one, negative 116, your calculator will give you an error message and say this does not work. So whenever you get a negative underneath the radical doing your b squared minus 4ac, you're going to say that there is no solution. Right? So there's the possibility that when you do your b squared minus 4ac, you might end up with a negative number. When that happens, you're going to say, sorry, there is no solution. Right? So that's always going to be a possibility. So we really have three types of problems. We have some where there is no solution. We have several where there are two solutions. Right? And we also have some that um, we're going to get the solutions, but they're going to be in this radical form where we may or may not be able to do some simplifying with this. Right? So we're going to start off by just saying, um, in this case, this is an acceptable answer. You could split it up, but only do that when you get nice radicals like 49, or we had a 36, or if you ever get a negative number, sorry there's no solution, and you are done.